Today, I'm joined by my good buddy, David Archer, South Carolina. Yeah. And he's got his 400 2.8 here in Costa Rica with me. I've got my 800 6.3. And we're going to talk about shooting all kinds of jungle stuff with big ones. That's right, it's a shootout. All right, so we're here in Costa Rica, way out in Costa Rica. Where are we? We're in the boondocks. We're in the boondocks. <laughs> David Archer from South Carolina, who I've had the privilege of running a bunch of workshops all over the world from Patagonia to his hometown at Charleston yes. and I running a workshop here in Costa Rica. He's got the brand new 402.8. I've got this 806.3. Both of us are having a blast. We're shooting a lot of stuff from surfing, monkeys, birds, birds, lizards, lizards, you name it. And we're trading the lenses back and forth a bit. So, what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna pull a bunch of images. We're gonna talk about the experience shooting with both of these big, new, exciting lenses. And uh, we'll share some images, some thoughts, and some comparisons since both of us have spent a good deal of time with both of them. So it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Well, hey everyone, safe and sound back in my studio. I've been pouring over images from Costa Rica. David Archer in his studio in South Carolina has been pouring through his images and we've got some to share with you and some thoughts about shooting with these new super telephoto lenses that Nikon has out uh, and just shooting with long lenses in general. Some tips, some tricks, some thoughts on the new technology and what it enables and some really fun images to share. Before we do it, I just really want to quick put the word out. We're having a big Zoom meeting, a free photography get together. And what we want to do is get your macro images, images from you, macro shots, and we're going to go over the gallery and ooh and odd everybody's amazing photos. I swear, every time we do one of these photo submission office hour sessions, this big free group meeting, it blows me away, the quality of the images that everyone in this community submits. So you can sign up for that. We're going to be doing it on July 19th. It gives you a little time to create a macro image. I'd love one that's, that's a, a, a later image, preferably one from this year. All the submission guidelines are up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. You can sign up for the office hours on either Zoom or YouTube Live. Again, 10 a.m. Pacific, July 19th. It gives you a little bit of time. Uh, and submit that image, and we're going to go through all those images. The regular cast, Woody, David, Rick, Darren, we'll have a really good time. So I hope that I'll see you there. Um, you know, again, all the gear that I'm talking about and that David's talking about is there's links to it all on my website, hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. Using those links helps support the content that we do on this channel, and I really appreciate it. And with that, Let's jump in, let's look at some pictures from Costa Rica and let's talk about shooting with these big, new, lightweight Super Telephoto Primes. So David and I, back from Costa Rica, he's barely got a wide enough webcam to, to show that 400. Um, but the two of us have put thousands of frames through these two lenses, the 400 2.8S, which you love. I do, it's pretty fantastic. It is. And I've put thousands of frames through the 800. And, you know, we each put a few through each other's lenses. And, and we have some thoughts, I think, to share. Uh, for those of you contemplating the purchase uh, of either of these lenses, I don't think either would make anyone unhappy. Um, that's an no. in interesting thoughts and things to share, I, I think, about these two. Um, it was such a fun time in Costa Rica with you. It was. It was a good time. Awesome people with us. And Pretty good conditions yeah. most of the time. We had a great crew. We had a little bit of rain, but that led to overcast skies and better shooting conditions because I can't imagine harsh sun in that rainforest yeah. with shadows. It was yeah, it was pretty awesome. It would have been possible to censor to read. Yeah. So I would say after shooting with both of these lenses, I mean, I, I think there there is something absolutely special about your lens. And, you know, I mean, for the price of the 400 2.8S, it really should be uh, a special, and, and it truly is. It delivers on that. I think the shocker to me, shooting with both of these, was how hand-holdable each of them were. I mean, we didn't use a tripod at all or a monopod. No, not even once. Which is just crazy. And, and you know, I, I will say, I think it, that the learning curve on your lens 
is a little bit easier just because it's 400. You can find your target. If the target's a little far away, you flip the lever, all of a sudden, you know, you get that 1.4 teleconverter boost and you're out at 560 F4. Um, it, it would be something you'd have an easier time taking a bird from a perch through flight and following it. The 800 is a pretty narrow view of the world. And it, it takes a little practice in getting used to. It does. I, and I think, and you don't have to go in the DX mode like I do. I'm I'm in yeah. DX mode a lot. That's with true. the five sixty converter on it at eight forty. And so it's it's a narrow field of view there too. That's true. So with your lens, you can lock onto your target at 400, flip it to the tunnel converter, be at 560. And then if you want still more using the 46 or 47 megapixels of the Z9, you can bump into DX mode and you still have 19 megapixels to work with and you've got an effective 800. You know, this lens, it takes some practice, but it really rewards that practice. The beginning of my workshop, I was literally, you know, hunting and seeking for where is that bird that I see? Is it, you know, and, and doing a lot of, of this and then sometimes missing shots because of it. By the end of the workshop, after we'd been working day after day after day and I'd shot tens of thousands of frames in burst mode through this lens, I found myself just, there it is. Um, and, and that's just, you know, the same with any of the photographic principles we talk about, practicing with your own gear and learning it. I'll say, you know, this lens paired with a 100 to 400 and a 1.4 teleconverter kind of covers all my needs uh, from a wildlife shooting perspective. Birds, wildlife, bears, you know, Yellowstone, the Tetons, African Safari, Costa Rican rainforest. It's a little more challenging to shoot with this 800, but I am getting, you know, filling the frame with faraway birds at full resolution, which is a nice thing. There are those times with this lens where I found myself backing into the trees and the hedgerows, trying to get a little bit further back to get a little more of the sloth in frame because I couldn't quite get its tail and its head at the same time. And that's where, you know, having two bodies, one with the 100 to 400 and a 1.4 teleconverter in your pocket would really be pretty incredible in a lot of situations, I think. It's a great kind of yeah, one-two punch. Would. Yeah, um, I'm thinking I especially... Mean, Next year for Tetons too, but oh, yeah. at the one to four hundred would be fantastic, and I well, don't have yeah, that lens. Yeah, you might you might want that if you're in the Tetons. I think that the thing about the Tetons is those mountain backdrops are so beautiful, and you want to do more yeah, environmental yeah. portraits with the with the wildlife in the foreground. So it's a true story. I want to jump in and look and share a few images, and and we'll put our our faces off to the side here. Um, let me pull up and, and, and uh, get a grid view here. I think I want to start off actually with some of David's photos and let him let him talk you through these um, that he shot mainly with the 400 um, 2.8. You can you can go ahead and, and yeah. jump in on this one. This is just on the property at, at where we yeah, this, the workshop. This is on the property. This is an owl butterfly, and you can see the obvious owl eye down at the bottom to to off predators, but if you look a little closer, in the top right, it looks like a, the face of a snake. And it's just another thing to ward off predators. But that was shot with the 400, at 400, 2.8, wide open. So it cool. just makes for the creamiest background. It really it's does. Really renders an, a nice background. And, and that lens really renders color especially well, too. Yeah. Not just the background, but it renders colors and, and detail just kind of in a magical way. It's a little like that 105 1.4 lens I love so much. It's just got a special yeah. way. Mm -hmm. And I had an older 400 that I guess I got about 10 years ago. It was two generations ago. And it had some of the same qualities, but I was limited to tripod because I could not handhold it at all. Big. Yep. I've shot with that lens of yours. It's a beautiful lens, just big and heavy. Yeah. yeah. I still have it and need need to sell it, but haven't yeah. done it yet, but I do need to to do that. But it's beautiful lens and the own, the main difference is the hand holdability. Plus the way this syncs up with the image stabilization Z9. That's what creates a lot of the magic. Because on a different body, we wouldn't be able to hand hold it as as low shutter speeds as we can. 
it's insane. I was hand holding the 800 at a 30th of a second in burst mode and finding sharp frames from still subjects in the, in the middle of the burst. It's just incredible. I know it would have been unbelievable a couple of years ago. Yeah. The technology. That, that would so be exciting. possible without so schlepping a tripod around. We've got a little basilisk lizard here, like a, a baby. Uh, they call them yeah. the Jesus Christ lizard because they run on the water. Um, and this again is out there in that crocodile pond, right where we stayed on the workshop. It is, yeah, right there in the property, Crocodile Bay yeah. Resort. This is an immature Love. one. The the full grown ones, the males have a big hood, which is kind of cool. Yeah. But I really like the reflection of this. This was at five sixty with the yeah. token, probably in DX yeah. mode. Yeah, in DX mode as well. So uh, we can get some and and yeah. using that a lot. We can actually look but at our hand second held as we run 125th. Look at that. Yeah, handheld 125th of the second. Yeah. One, that, gets one, you that, that gets you that ISO and that range where it's so nice and smooth. Here's another one at 560. I love the way you framed it up with the with the howler monkey's tail wrapped around the tree. Beautiful. Yeah, couldn't do much about the yeah. Couldn't do too much about the hot spots in the background because that's where it was and and where we could get, but I minimized as much as I could, but, you know, still rendered the howler monkey pretty well. Love I it. Think. This next one really talk shows the color that you're talking about. Um, yeah. Just. Yes. Yeah, great color rendering and run through DXO deep prime. And, and then I guess just Photoshop the rest to, just to, well, and, I noticed things. the color when, when I took some shots with your lens too, the colors are just gorgeous. I really do love the way it renders color. Special. Yeah, it, it really does. It's harder to see on a small screen. People seeing this on a phone, we're not going to see what we're seeing on our monitors. But, True but story. It, it is a difference on the monitor. Now, this was with your 800 that afternoon that we swapped lenses. And this is one of my favorites from the trip. And the background is is beautiful too, and the the color and the sharpness, everything you know, no fault. I I couldn't really tell this was not the four hundred. No, it's, I I I am more than happy with the results of the eight hundred. As I said, I think it it, it rewards a bit of practice. Uh, you know, it's not as simple yeah. lens to pick up and go shooting with, but man, with some practice, it it really is a special special lens. Uh, I can't send it back. That's for sure. No. And I maybe if be, my kids were through college, I'd be debating whether to get your lens or not. But uh, you know, for for half the price, I'm pretty happy with the 800. Oh yeah, and I would be very happy with the 800 too. Oh, uh, here's the 400. Look at that out of focus yeah. and rendering. Oof. Right. So so this is at 400. So it just it separates the subject from the background so well. And I don't know. It's just such a pleasing natural look. I mean, it's really like a por portrait is what I was going for. That's yeah, well, you got it. You got I love this next one, too, the the slow yawn, you call it. <laughs> yeah, the, this was about a 10-second yawn, the, the silent scream. <laughs> but the, just the detail that it renders on the, on the fur, and the, you can, can see the color. There's like moss and stuff's growing on it because it's hanging out there in the weather all the time. And even stop down to F4 at 400, the bokeh is just beautiful. Right. Yeah, just another portrait. This was a crop of a, of a full body shot, but wanted to show the face and wanted to show the claw. It's the, gorgeous. The toes. Look at these leaves back here. Yeah, it's just these, these lenses are both special. The, the 400 has a certain quality about it. There's no denying it. It's just so sharp and yeah. such beautiful color. Um, yeah, it's discernible at home on your, on your good monitor. Oh, Maybe is. not so much by the time it gets on Facebook. And, and or even recorded from a screenshot and put out over YouTube compressed. You know, you may not be yeah. seeing quite as much spectacular color as we are. Both lenses are great. The the 400 has a, something special about it. Here it is. It you were you were cropped into to 560 here. 
four thousandth right. of a second. Look at that. Right. Beautiful. You know, dealing with some kind of harsh light conditions at the time and and trying to predict when these birds were gonna fly. And I was would have loved a better background, but I was happy to to get it frozen so if, and charred. If I was shooting birds in flight, I for sure would prefer the four hundred. <laughs> I think for me, most of the time when I'm shooting birds in flat, I'm, I'm going to reach for the 100 to 400 because, you know, yeah. I can find them at 100 or 200 and then zoom into them in flight and start start shooting. Um, with the 800, it's, you know, unless you've got a situation, I'll show you a shot in here where the perfect situation for shooting birds in flight at 800, you've, you've got a place where you know they're about to take off from from observing their behavior and you can you can get ready. Um, it's just hard to yeah. track with that long a lens. Oh, look at the baby spider monkey. It's a yeah. it's an adolescent spider monkey. I love the framing and the way the leaves go to, to green back there with this. Wide open yeah, the, with the teleconverter. Correct, yeah. Probably yeah. with with the DX mode engaged as well. Because it he was pretty far away. There is just something special. You know, if you shot this, I, I love my 500 PF and I would be very happy with an image out of the 500 PF, but you'd have a lot more detail um, distracting you in this in this frame. This just has such yeah. a lovely way of the focus fall off. It's yeah, special. I love my 500 PF. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I went to that from the, the old 400 2.8 and the portability made up for the lack of a pleasing bokeh wasn't bad but but not this not not like this i like that here's an 800 millimeter portrait of david shooting the 400 <laughs> <laughs> so it just goes to show i mean it, they're big lenses but they're really weighted toward the back um they're not that heavy they're much lighter than you would think looking at a photo of them or you know until you pick one up you're like oh it's not that heavy i had someone in the studio just this morning, picking up one of the custom tripods that I build and sell, and they, they, they said, "Wow, that's huge!" And then they picked it up, and they go, "Well, oh, it's really not that heavy." And most of the weight, the way they designed these, there, there's a lot of weight toward the back, so it really winds up not being difficult to to brace and handhold. I mean, you and I were handholding them all day long. Oh yeah, it it feels much better. That was the drawback with the old 400 2.8 because it was front heavy. Sure. And I couldn't handhold it, not even one shot. I've just got a yeah. couple of frames that I shot with David's 400. This was blinked out to 560, stopped down a little bit just to try to get most of the folk in the motorcycle in focus. And it just shows the complicated conditions we were shooting in. You know, you're shooting in constantly changing light. One minute you're shooting something in the shadows over here, the next minute they're backlit and highlights over here. So we shot a lot of what we shot in manual mode with auto ISO. So you could adjust a little aperture, try to get more than one thing in focus at a time. Or you could, you know, you could you could open it wide up and try to stop motion and get your shutter speed faster. And here's a handheld uh, one sixtieth of a second with that with that teleconverter activated five sixty um, f four. Now the baby's eyes aren't totally sharp when I zoom in, but I think you'll see that the the mom's face. Let's see, did I click? nice and sharp you know i would stop down just a little bit for the baby but i think it's acceptably sharp i love the little yeah, bit of yeah. sticking through there and um i mean there you have it that hand holdable to a 60th of a second right there um no and then been here's unheard, of. unheard of you know here's one uh of this little bird on the barbed wire fence stacy actually has fallen in love with this she wants a she wants a print of it in the in the kids room Again, shooting David's lens with the teleconverter activated. Um, but you know, I think when it comes to birding, a person might consider the 800 that I have if you're a real birder, um, just because of the reach. And if you like small birds that you know aren't aren't particularly tame, <laughs> yeah. it, it just has the the resolving power. You know, here's wide open at 800 millimeters, and it's nice and sharp, and renders out of focus details really beautifully too. Um, you know. This okay. this bird was perched in the darkest of dark uh, little hedgerows with a lot of complicated stuff nearby. I couldn't get any separation, but I filled the frame. This is not a crop uh, wow. without 
getting close enough to spook it. You know, I slowly slunk in to where I filled the frame. Uh, and you can see, you know, I got down to 125th of a second to get a reasonable ISO where, you know, and the sharpness and rendering out of this lens is, is pretty amazing wide open. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, not, not bad at all. Um, it's beautiful. Was that at the rental house before the workshop? No, this was on when we went birding and we went out the long road into uh, Matapalo. But when we crossed that one bridge that was kind of dangerous where you had to go through the river, right yeah. after it, we took the right and went up to the top of the hill that way on the road that goes up. Um, this is right. when we went with Dennis's friend. Um, um, oh, my gosh. What was his name? Wonderful bird guide. I'll have to look yeah, that. yeah. Right. That was before I got there. Or you got there. This is that same morning up on the mountaintop early in the morning. We left it. We left home at 5 a.m. to be up there when the birds were just waking up and active. These scarlet macaws were, were going through their, their morning routine. Again, you know, wide open. I was hoping that they might fly, so I had it stopped down. Um, also, I wasn't as practiced as I was later in the workshop. They were pretty calm and relaxed. I could have lowered my shutter speed significantly and gotten a lower ISO shot. But still, you know, this is... This is 2000 ISO with the D800 or with the, the Z9, <laughs> D800 with Man. the Z9. I have no problem just pulling the noise and sharpening sliders a little bit to get a nice clean image. I didn't even run this through through DXO, which I could. Um, yeah. You know, here here's where I was talking about if you're going to capture birds in flight with a long lens like an 800, you've got to find a spot where you know they're going to be because <laughs> you're not going to find them in midair with that long Man. lens. But they were eating these nuts and they would land and get a nut in their beak and then fly back to another tree where they like to perch and eat it. And so I just waited for one to get a nut and take off the branch. And I have about six or seven nice sharp frames of it coming in, but I like this one with the wings spread and all those rainbow colors. Oh yeah. Colors are beautiful. This is one of my favorites of yours from the trip. Oh, it just, you know, this was shot at the crocodile Bay area where we were staying in that same little, little, uh, Crocodile Pond, where the basilisk lizard that David showed early on here was, and you know this is barely, this isn't really cropped at all. Um, it's just, and I shot it way too fast to shutter speed. This was one of the first days of the workshop. I think I was trying to shoot birds in flight, and that were there was all those nesting birds, and I was trying to capture a bird in flight with the 800 and really struggling. And then all of a sudden, this crocodile was swimming toward us, and I pivoted down and fired off these frames. And it happened again later in the workshop, and I got a similar composition, but the water wasn't reflecting the green of the trees as beautifully. So I just ran this through DxO uh, deep or pure raw too, and you can see that even at ten thousand ISO, you run an image oh, through yeah. pure raw, you get a nice clean result, which you can do a little more noise reduction and sharpening on in Lightroom with the resultant DNG file. That's um, beautiful so. detail in the eyeball. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. I mean, both of these lenses. You know, I will say with the 800, a lot of times you're going to have, especially in deep forest like this, you know, you're not out on safari, you're not in the Tetons with wide open plains. In the forest, you're often going to have to be really careful about your framing. You're going to have to move your feet. And a lot of times there's just going to be a few things in the foreground. This one, I think it works. It kind of frames, yeah. you know, it shows you the environment that this spider monkey's living in. Other times, you know, this monkey was so close. This was at the rental house we were staying in, eating mangoes in the tree outside our house, this capuchin monkey. This is this is not cropped. This is what the 800 does when something's close to you. <laughs> you, know, you. You can't get the whole monkey in the frame. That's where you might reach for the, for the 100 to 400. And I will say that for surf photography, and I'm excited to get out to some kiteboarding spots that I love, um, you know, this is from the beach of surfing and it's almost as if I'm in the water with them. I mean, it's just I amazing. 800 is perfect for a surf lens. I, I was astounded at what a perfect lens it was for the break that we were photographing one day, David and I, I'll just show you a few <laughs> more frames. I, I love from the 800. This is that same little monkey. I think that David got the beautiful shot framed in the tree. I've got a little more obstruction in the foreground and some raindrops whizzing through here. But, uh, this that was that was so fun watching him eat those, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He ate the whole he having, thing. He was having salad. 
Yeah. This one, this is the one I talked about where I've got the 800 and someone else was using my 100 to 400 and I'm backing into the hedge that was on this edge of that road. There was a thick hedge yeah. and I literally yeah. had the tip of the lens sticking out of the hedge and I'm all in the bushes trying to be able to get the whole sloth in the rain. <laughs> but then you move in and you do something that the 800's good at, you know, yeah. which is those portraits like David shot. Um, another one, that was just a beautiful, beautiful scene with those, those uh, macaws nesting in the tree. We slunk up on them slow. Our guide, Dennis, was so good. We parked away. You know, I, 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 I will say, I've been saying that the 800 requires a little bit of practice to, to get good with and hone in on. But once you do it, it does really reward you. If the 400 is not in your budget, but the 800 is, don't feel that you're not going to be happy. I, I am in absolute love with this 800. Oh, yeah, uh, you'll I, be totally I, happy. Yeah, you'll be totally happy. It does a beautiful job. You can see it has lovely bokeh too. It's you know, it's not quite the 4028's bokeh maybe, but it's pretty nice and your ability to pull in distant small subjects is just unrivaled. Um, and is. then in those yeah. those instances where you want to go a little wider, you pick up the 100 to 400, you know, here I am at 400 millimeters. And there was all this crazy activity with this family of capuchin monkeys. And the adults were really upset with this, this teenage monkey, I'm going to call it. And the baby's just watching everything with wide eyes. And, you know, they're pulling the tail here and screeching it. And, you know, it was so fun. The, the 100 to 400 was perfect for that because I wanted to see the whole scene. Um, you know, or the environmental portrait uh, of the spider monkey. I would only probably be able to get the face and the arm at, at 800. Here at 400, I get sort of the environment, and I like the way these tree branches sort of V out from the bottom right corner. Um, or just this moment, you know, where that's the lens I happen to have on the camera, and this green um, kingfisher landed right outside the little Airbnb house that we had in Puerto Jimenez, and it was just a perfect... I slid the screen door open just just wide enough to poke the tip of that 100 to 400 through and shot the shot the frame um, and then it was gone you know they kingfishers spook pretty easily yeah they but do. they're strange i think that the 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 end all point about this is if you get either one of these lenses and you practice with it you're going to be more than happy you will and so, david i want to Thank you so much for sharing images, for sharing the time on the workshop, for helping lead it. And also, you know, I'm just looking forward to more workshops with those lenses out in the field together. We're going to we're going to have a blast. I think these are going to be on our sides for years to come out in the field with lots of fun critters to photograph. And, and sometimes right. big landscapes, you know, where there's just a little bit of beautiful light somewhere in the distance. You can fill the frame with that gorgeous moment. You know, I. I haven't made an 800 millimeter landscape yet, but I'm sure there'll be a moment where I do at some point. <laughs> I've got plenty of 500 landscapes from the Palouse, so why not an 800? I try. All right. Well, hey, you know, I, I hope that you'll all join us. We're going to do an office hours again. I talked about it in the beginning, but we're going to do an office hours on, is it um, July 19th? 10 a.m. Pacific, and we'd love for all of you to submit macro images. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about macros and, and approaching the scene between now and then and some of the things we learned in Costa Rica. We had a lot of fun shooting macros there. Um, some handheld techniques that I really, really enjoyed. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that in an upcoming ATS. I'll describe some of the things I learned in Costa Rica, and we're going to go through your images. So sign up for that Office Hours big free group meeting um and hopefully david you'll be able to make that one on the on the 19th of july it's about a month out from now um and we'll have david and rick and darren along as well and looking through your images you always submit the most amazing images as a community so sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours and submit your image there and we'll go through them and enjoy the gallery together on the 19th of july all right yeah um yeah. Other than that, I just hope everybody is staying safe, having fun, enjoying, getting out, being creative. David, I know you got a house remodel going on. Yeah. It's, it's less fun than workshops. <laughs> it can cut down on your photography time, but you got to do it to stay sane. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks again, buddy. It's so good hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, I always right. look forward to these.
Yeah, I do too. All right, man. Well, we'll see you. We'll see all of you. Stay safe. Have fun. See you next week.